small presentation. Um, my name is Lukas Jonathan Weber. I'm 26 years old and I'm a PhD candidate at Mercedes Benz AG um, in the Department of the Interior Development, um, located in Stuttgart in the southwest of Germany. Um, just a small agenda for my today's presentation. Um, first of all, I would like to give you an introduction, um, also a very practical introduction, because I think it's quite important for you to know in which area we are working. Um, after this, I would like to give you uh, the problem description. Based on this, as a second step in the presentation, I would like to share you with you my proposed concept. And yeah, last but not least, um, my future work and my future activities, yes. So basically, let's come to the introduction. As you all may know, Mercedes-Benz produces more or less two and a half million cars a year, um, at least in 2020. And we are in the interior development. We are responsible for the uh, development of interior components. Um, later on, these components and all the cars of Mercedes-Benz will be produced in the plants. Customer will use and buy these cars, of course. Um, and later on, after several months or years, the customer identifies some defects of some interior components, like yeah, some problems with the steering wheel, some problems with seats, center console issues, or instrument panel issues, for example. They go to the dealer workshop and say, hey, guys, um, my car is defect. It wasn't my fault. Please repair it. So the guys in the dealer workshop, they um, document the feedback of the customer. And they also document, I call it the complaint solving process. Yeah. And we, are, we in the interior development, uh, we need to analyze these feedbacks manually, right? Um, to um, improve the future product quality of the products of Mercedes-Benz. Um, yeah, um, the quality of the cars of Mercedes-Benz are quite good, yeah? but based on 2.2 million produced cars a year, we have a huge amount of unstructured automotive feedback texts based on customer feedbacks. Yeah, and yeah, that's basically a huge problem for, for an engineer to analyze these unstructured texts um, on, on his own. Yeah. Um, these feedback texts are often not in a directly machine uh, processable form. So we had an approach to use uh, uh, NLP-based text mining architecture, which uh, is using deep learning language models for analyzing um, these feedback texts. There we have a problem. Um, currently available deep learning language models are mainly trained on general text data. And the use of a generally trained language model in domain specific areas for example, biology, finance, medicine, also automotive area, um, yields to a significant performance problem in uh, future text mining tasks. Um, why? The reason for this are these specific technical uh, terms, expressions, and of course, the overall technical sentence structure. So we have more or less two problems. We have a huge amount of domain specific texts, unstructured domain specific texts, and uh, the use of a generally trained language model in domain specific areas um, yields to really a significant performance problem. Also, the application of generally trained language models in the automotive area will lead to this performance issue or performance problem. You can see here some um, domain specific automotive terms like condensation, water drain hose, center fill, or open power trim. And there are, of course, many, many more. And of course, much complex, uh, much more complex uh, words. Yeah? So basically, we need labeled warranty and goodwill data sets to be able um, to transform a generally trained language model to a domain specific one yeah? to ensure. Uh, that the performance in future text mining tasks, like named entity recognition or relation extraction, um, is on a high and a good quality level. Yeah? But we have the next problem here. Yeah? We have actually no labeled warranty goodwill data sets. So it's up to us to create suitable annotated data sets for the training, for the training of the language model, 
and later on to share them with the scientific community. And here in this context, in the labeling process, we are at Daimler really the experts of labeling these um, texts. So we are able to create some gold annotated standard data sets. Let's come to the proposed concept, just a small overview. Um, yeah, how we can transform uh, the generally trained BERT model um, to a domain specific one, right? So BERT stands for bidirectional and coder representations from transformers published in 2018. And basically BERT is a context dependent word representation language model, which is based on two approaches. On the one hand, the mask language modeling approach and the next sentence prediction approach. The mask language modeling approach here in this um, BERT model is very simple, but very, very effective. Yeah? Um, basically with the mask language modeling approach, um, the model has to predict randomly mask entities in a given sentence. So you have a sentence, there you mask some entities and the model has to predict these mask entities based on the context. And the other um, approach uh, is the next sentence prediction approach. This is basically an approach of predicting the right sequence of sentences. So follows the sentence A, a sentence B or not. Let's come to the transfor transforming part of the concept. concept, concept. So we plan to transform the um, generally pre-trained BERT model to the Warrington Goodwill BERT model with a very popular two-stage model training approach. On the one hand, um, we have there a pre-training aspect and a fine-tuning phase. In the pre-training phase, we use the mentioned mask language modeling approach as an unsupervised training approach. Um, to ensure the basic uh, word understanding of the BERT model, um, with of course the warranty and goodwill texts. These uh, warranty and goodwill texts will come from the deal workshops, customers, customer feedbacks, and yes, of course, all the feedbacks we are able to generate. Mm. The much more important aspect is the fine tuning phase. This fine tuning phase will be supervised, um, and we identified two major task which are very important for us it's on the one hand the warranty and goodwill named entity recognition task and on the other hand the warranty and goodwill relation expansion task so named entity recognition is basically the identification of domain specific automotive warranty and goodwill expressions in a sentence in an unstructured text um, relation extraction is then the classification of the relationship of the identified entities in these texts. Mm. We will go with a performance evaluation with the F1 score. And as I already told you, um, it is up to us to create um, two gold annotated uh, data sets for this fine tuning phase. Um, here is a small picture of the proposed concept. The picture is basically divided up into two main uh, parts. On the left side, the pre-training phase, on the right side, the fine-tuning phase. Um, as I already told you, we will use this mask language modeling approach um, to, I would say, update uh, the pre-training phase of the BERT model with 250 million English words. As yes, 250 million is, uh, is not that much in contrast to 3.3 billion words, but it's just a first step for us. Um, of course, we are able to generate 2 billion words or 3 billion words, but we, we will start with 250 million and we'll figure out if um, 1 billion word or 2 billion word um, will be necessary. Based on this pre-training phase, as I already told you, um, we will do two fine-tuning phases. It's the named entity recognition and relation extraction task. Um, last but not least, future work aspect. So as I already mentioned, uh, first of all, my colleagues and I, um, majorly I, uh, have to label um, gold annotated data sets in the area of named entity recognition and relation extraction. Later on, we will use these data sets, of course, for transforming the generally trained language model bird to a domain specific one with our uh, two stage training approach. After this, we will go with a performance evaluation between our domain specific warranty goodwill bird and 
the generally trained bird model. And as a forecast, I would say um, we will do some experiments just with an unsupervised domain specific bird model. Thank you very much. And this was my small overview about my uh, paper.